Hello, this everyone, this is Glenda Carlin and it's Tuesday night, can <laughs> picture the date, February 22nd, 2022. We got a bunch of twos there. <laughs> we're, not, we're, we're not in duality, but that's a, that's a pretty amazing number. Welcome everybody, welcome son, Holy Son of God Edward, Holy Son of God Nance, Holy Son of God Gonzalo, Holy Son of God Kareem, Holy Son of God Alicia, Holy Son of God Joanna, Holy Son of God Chaz, Holy Son of God Debbie, Holy Son of God Teresa, Holy Son of God Julia, Holy Son of God Lou Ellen. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here, everyone. Thank you, thank you. And we want to invite in, they're always here, but we invite them in. Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters, come in, come in. They're always here, but we invite you in to help us. Have fun plus gain insight, insights, and help us on our path of awakening. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Plus, plus, I sometimes forget to say this here, but of course we do it in our Buddhist Dzogchen meditations. You always give, you always give what benefit you've gotten from a meeting out to the universe, to all sentient beings to help them. Whatever light and insight you get, you just give it out. You don't keep this stuff or hoard it. You let it out because in that you feel compassion and empathy also for your brothers. Your the object is to help. You are the savior of the world, but also your brothers, your savior it goes hand in hand. But you want to release all this good will, good spirit, good light and love that you're feeling out into the world. So now we'll meditate just here for just a minute or two because there's a lot to talk about tonight. Um. And, and, and see, this can be done without even a meditation, although it's best if you can, is just picture, if you close your eyes and just picture, there's an altar in your mind. And I want you just to put on that altar the things you think you need to be happy. Then I want you to see those things disappear into the light with your body. Now, what I'd like you to do is practice advanced forgiveness on whatever you put on that altar. If it was a person, then say their name, could be more than one person, or it could be a situation, or it could be this deal with the Ukraine and Russia, could be the environment, I don't know, whatever you put on there, Practice advanced forgiveness. And what that means, you're saying to that person or situation, you are spirit, whole, pure, and innocent. All is forgiven and released. Or you can simply say three words to that person or situation. And those three words are all of it. Either one of those two. And then to yourself, or so wait, Practice advanced forgiveness on what you put on that altar. Then practice advanced forgiveness on yourself, saying, I am immortal spirit. This body is a false image and has nothing to do with what I am. I am immortal spirit. This body is a false image and has nothing to do with what I am. Or to yourself, you can say the three words, all of it, period. Now, why all of it is such a big deal is, in essence, God and the son of God are all of it. There's nothing else. There's no duality. There's no subject and object. There's no breath. There's no body walking around here. There, there, there isn't even light, light or awareness of anything and that's just going to segue me now just bring yourself back to this place this segment weighs me into the topic of tonight's conversation and I have to I always tell you guys I'm blown away by what what there's the mo, there's a momentum that builds on all this advanced forgiveness that you do and that you turn each day over to Holy Spirit asking to guide you tell you what to do or say be the boss and meditating, daily meditation, it builds on itself. And what happens as your mind is purified from thoughts of separation from God and your brothers by doing this advanced forgiveness, 
Holy Spirit that can heal, then can heal unconscious guilt. The mind gets purified more and more where there's less and less chaos. There's less and less thoughts in the mind and you have visions in, during meditation where Holy Spirit can show you things that you further practice on. But anyway, it's miraculous. Their, their Holy Spirit uses all of this. So as you all have been following me and my experiences, this was the, one of the, I mean, they're all very miraculous, or I call them even, wow, this is unbelievable to my, <laughs> I never knew what awakening meant or enlightenment. And good thing is because then there would, wouldn't, there'd be expectations and there's no expectations. When you find yourself having an attachment or an aversion, that's when you're in duality and you got to turn it loose. You got to let that thought go. And that thought may show up 500 times. Every time you catch yourself, you're aware that you're stuck on a thought, a story, something going on. Then you let that go. You simply let the thought go. But anyway, so I've been, you know, meditating daily. And I, that's another thing. It's each of your choices, whether you do this or not. But the miracles really started when, about six months ago when I started meditating with this Buddhist Dzogchen group um, daily out of L.A. And on Sunday, meditating with Lama Surya Das's group. So I'm just going to look down through my notes. But um, this ha started happening on Friday. Uh, last Friday, uh, then Sunday, and I forget if it happened on Saturday, but it's called, it's called Samadhi in Buddhism. Now, y'all, I do not, I did not know what that meant. Here, when I had this experience of where I what was like going into unconsciousness or blacking out, and the only way I knew something had happened was I came back and I was in awareness of my breath. I was awareness of my body because I was meditating. But then, so I Googled uh, unconsciousness in Buddhism. I'm not kidding you. I wrote it different in the email because I forgot what I did, but it came to me. And don't you know, the word samadhi showed up and samadhi means the transcendence over all mental activity. Now, I didn't know what the heck any of that meant until it happened. Now, so then, but I remembered Holy Spirit gave me the thought. I've read it before in the course, but I sure as heck didn't know what it meant. In the course, Jesus had a phrase, beyond experience, we try to hasten. And I'm not kidding. That phrase came beyond experience, we try to hasten. So I, you know, in, you can go online into A Course of Miracles and you can put search for a phrase or a word and up came this paragraph. So I'm going to read this paragraph because this, this explains what happened. One is simply, is simply the idea God is. Because after this experience, or it can be called a non-experience, because an experience is when there's a subject and an object. There's me out there looking at something and feeling something, saying something. In this non-experience I had, there were no feelings. It was, it was a void, but it was everything. <laughs> but there's no, in, in duality, there's a subject and an object. There was no subject and object, no awareness. But anyway, that's why... In the course, Jesus says God is, but also in Buddhism, it'll talk about isness, beingness, because in that state or condition, there's no subject and object. But we, anyway, so Jesus says, and this is in workbook part one, 169, lesson 169. Oneness is simply the idea God is, and in his being, he encompasses all things. No mind holds anything but him. We say God is, and then we cease to speak. For in that knowledge, words are meaningless. There are no lips to speak them, and no part of mind sufficiently distinct 
to feel that it is now aware of something not itself. Now, listen to what he's saying. I never understood. There's no part of a mind that could ever feel this or be aware of something not itself. So he's saying, you're not a mind. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the con conundrum or the Cohen of the deal. Jesus in A Course of Miracles has to convince you you're a mind and not a body. Well, that's easier said than done, but by doing the lessons and practicing the truths, you finally realize, yeah, well, I got a choice here. I'm the decision maker. I'm the witness. I'm the observer. I can choose again based on my feelings. How, if I don't feel happy, <laughs> loved, et cetera, I've chosen the wrong voice. I've chosen to listen to ego. So he's getting you to take that your mind, that you're a mind. And then he, in the process, and the Buddhists do it too. They want you to awaken your mind. Uh, and then they want you to take your awareness and awaken your awareness. And the whole process is then you open your heart because you got to open your heart. It's an actual experience for compassion and empathy to your brothers. Because, but you're using your mind to, you know, to reason with yourself, sort true from false. That's what Jesus says in the course. The purpose of the course is to take you from false perception to true perception. That's what Jesus says. He tells us, I'm not taking you to knowledge. I'm not taking you there. I'm just getting you to sort true from false. Okay, now that's the conundrum because all over the internet on course groups, they'll talk, we know, and I failed in to pray on this too. I thought it was a mind. Well, hey, when you get to the point where you've let go of all thoughts, there's no mind, there's no awareness, because that's duality, subject, object. But we, Holy Spirit, Jesus says in the course, Holy Spirit uses everything in this world to take us beyond the world. So anyway, <laughs> he says there's no part of the mind that could ever be aware of this. It has united with its source. And like its source itself, it merely is. We cannot speak nor write nor even think of this at all. So I'm just going to try to do the best I can here tonight. Help me, Holy Spirit. Jesus <laughs> and Buddha, help me. Because as I explain this, I like what I like about all this is I'm just sharing what I'm going through so that you all are motivated to continue to practices, practice advanced forgiveness, turn your day over to Holy Spirit, meditate. Because you can awaken from this dream, but you got to practice. If you don't practice, this is not going to happen. Okay, so anyway, but he says we cannot speak nor write or even think of this at all. It comes to every mind when total recognition that its will is God's has been completely given and received completely. It returns, here you go, it returns the mind into the endless present where the past and future cannot be conceived. So see, it's, it's getting you, it's taking you out of the mind. It lies beyond salvation. Now, this is where it really blew me away. What samadhi, this non-experience, I'm going to share, talk more about. It lies beyond salvation. Because see, all this forgiveness, turning your deal Holy Spirit, is getting you to salvation, to save yourself and help, you know, how you think about your brother goes past all thought of time. Then he says, it even goes past forgiveness because forgiveness is subject and object as well. And it goes past the holy face of Christ. But now the course, the crux of the course is, he, Jesus says it over and over and over again, see the face of Christ in every one of your brothers and see him as the son of God. We have to do that. This is part of the process. So you can't just jump from, oh, I'd really like to go beyond all mental activity. <laughs> you, I mean, I wish. Now, there could be a few that could do it. But it is a frightening-ass process that you're going to go through in a, lot, in a very smooth way. Holy Spirit will take you through a smooth, happy way if you surrender to this and let go instead of trying to hurry things or, or whatever because you're wanting to go with the flow. But if you, if you practice, 
then what happens, you change dimensions of time and space. And like Gary Renard says in some of his books, Art and Persa will say, you get to chapter four, and, and if you can answer these questions, you get to skip to chapter seven, eight, nine, and 10. Then when you answer these questions, you get to skip to chapter 20. So I'm not saying you can't skip, but you're not gonna probably skip from zero to 50, <laughs> but you could. I never did. I was a hard nut to crack. Okay, so it lies beyond salvation, past all thought of time. Forget past forgiveness, past the holy face of Christ. The son of God has merely disappeared into his father as his father has in him. The world has never been at all. Eternity remains a constant state. This is beyond experience we try to hasten. Look at that phrase. This is beyond experience. Now, I, I don't know what that meant, but now I do. We're going past experience. Yet forgiveness taught and learned brings with it the experience with which bears witness that the time the mind itself determined to abandon all but this is now at hand. So is that not amazing? One paragraph in that whole two inch thick book, right? What I found is you open the book, you do, do the lessons. And remember when you start the lessons, don't stop. Eagle wants you to stop and start again. You just keep methodically going through that book. And then, then somewhere the uh, Jesus talks about in uh, leave, forget all thoughts, forget this course, blah, blah, blah. And some people take that literally and they just stop the book. They think they've made it. Well, that's their deal. But I'm to explain if I look as I look back on my process, that's why you keep going back, reading the text again, doing the lessons again, because you get them deeper. This Lama Surya Das, that's my guru, he calls it drilling the well, because you go deeper and deeper and deeper into this. Your practices get more methodic. You build a firm foundation and you are dedicated to this, this practice while you take care of your family members, you fix dinner, <laughs> watch TV, <laughs> go to the movies, <laughs> whatever, whenever you want to after COVID. Because this, to me, I'm a practical person. I'm not an extremist. I still visit the doctor for my wellness visit, take my vitamins. I, you know, I ask Holy Spirit, I walk, I, I go lift weights at the health club. But while I'm doing all this, as soon as I can, I'm thinking of my brothers that I see as holy sons of God. And I'm also visualizing that this pure, golden, transparent light is streaming. Like now I'll look at Nance. It's just streaming all through her, all through her building, her windows. There's nothing there but this streaming light. And there's a faint image of where her form lays in it like a hologram. Because there's a big projector behind us, the sun, the source, the light. It projects the light, all it's streaming through everything. And as Jesus says, and like I learned last week or the week before, I poo-pooed that earth, there was any form out there about Garden of Eden. I wouldn't believe in none of that. Well, I found the phrase in there where Jesus says the pre-separation state of the Garden of Eden. And the word pre-separation of Garden of Eden. So the son of God can create forms and play in them without judgment. Everything's light, no judgment, no duality. There's just this, this flow of light in the garden of Eden. But all of a sudden, the son of God had a stupid, crazy, mad idea and judged something was not right or bad. And he fell asleep and went into duality. So we are waking up from this, but the Garden of Eden is here still. The light, the golden transparent light streams through everything. Dead fronds, mailboxes, because it's the only light. There's only light. So it's just miraculous, the transition I've made, because see, I had a closed mind, and it's just the way things are. As you practice the course, we try to think about we get a reason with ourselves and we come up with a answer about something or an understanding and before I know it I have grabbed onto that understanding and I'm not letting go well what I've learned is you want to let go be open 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 
with the process, not with any firm beliefs. And what I learned with this Dzogchen meditation, it's called sky gazing, and it's just amazing. Totally freeing, liberating, amazing. They have a person, I have the pe each person look out at like the sky and imagine the mind expands 360 degrees. I won't go through the whole thing. This sky, because see, the, they're taking you through the mind. The mind is expansive. We're not this speck of dirt with a little brain right here in this one spot. You are vast. This is a vast mind. And you're watching clouds come and go, birds come and go, because they're teaching you to let your thoughts come and go. Now, Jesus does it in his own way, but that didn't help me as much as this helps me. Because as I watch these birds come and go in the sky, what happens, you transfer it to your daily life. You transfer it to the thoughts you're thinking during the day. If I start to get Velcroed or glued to a thought, I realize I attach. It's called attachment, clinging to a thought, and you let go. You let go of that thought, practice forgiveness, and let that thought go. And then you're just in the flow. And then you recognize I've attached or I pushed another thought away and you do this, you let that go. You're, you're relaxing and you're letting go. It's a flow. You're letting things come and go, come and go because that everything is flowing in the in and out movement of the great ray that comes in the top of your head. And that is an in and out movement. And that in and out movement is what the body mimics with the breath and the heartbeat. They, all those two things mimic and start to flow as you, as you practice breathing, like you take an in breath and then exhale saying, ah. If you do that slow enough, you're gonna get a rhythm. There's a rhythm to this. Now folks, I didn't know what they were, they were doing but in all these different meditations, and when Lama Surya Das does it, he'll say, he'll be about taking the breath. Then you'll hear him go, ah, 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 what a relief. A-H, you know, it's A-H. Well, that A-H is a seed syllable. It is, it, it, it is a life force. It's, an, it's a living force called the Tao, T-A-O, or God. Is that all? Trans what's happened to me in the last month so much has happened is that time in meditation he had us say the word ah we were all muted and he said nobody's listening just say it in all kinds of pitches wallered around nobody cares and i would we'd go and he'd do it too ah, 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 ah and you're just doing ah, 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 ah. well picture he the first time he did that i'm going yeah that's pretty cute I didn't get into it. Second time in a meditation, we had to say all and do all that. I got into it. I took a deep breath and on the out breath saying, ah, I then played with all those vibrations and all that stuff. And then Lama Suri Das says, now I really want you to mean it. And so I'm admitting Joan and Brian. And so boy, I took an in breath and I let the out breath go and man, I went after it. And do you know, all of a sudden, the ah, A-H, took on a life of its own. I wasn't doing anything. I was just hearing it and watching it with awareness. And it was going, ah, it was going by itself. And then later, two weeks later, I'm sitting in my chair. I'm condensing all this. It was quiet. And I was watching TV. I heard it, my heart's beating. I heard the word ah. Ah, 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 matching the beat of my heart. And I'm going, now, that's crazy. So I turned, muted the TV, and there it was, ah, ah, following the heart of the beat of the heart. And I thought, well, that's crazy. Then I thought, well, I'll talk to myself and still see if it's there. So I started talking to myself. It was still there. Now, you Google A-H in Buddhism, and you'll see it's a seed syllable. It's the root of poems, chants, sutras. It's the living force, which Hindus and people call the Tao, T-A-O, or we call God. I don't know what Muslims call it, but it is a living force. And I thought, well, that was great. So that, I went thinking to myself, now, I really know there's a God. 
And I was satisfied. I know there's a God, but I keep practicing. I'm not kidding you. I practice forgiveness all day and not as often as I can remember TV when I'm driving, all the stuff that in the kitchen when a thought comes to mind, my loved ones, my companion, I'll beam that light right into their forehead. I mean, they are a holy son of God, but I'm beaming my light into their light because I want the light to touch them, to open their mind to transformation, etc. So I just keep practicing. And that's why I explained to you, be open. I, th I thought that was good enough. I knew there was a living force in it. <laughs> I thought that was good enough. You just keep meditating. So in the meditation, in this email that I sent out, what happened was there was a meditation where they call it, I think, King Lion Meditation. I don't, may not have the name exactly right. But what if they explained it, I forget if it was Vicky or Doug or Bev, there's leaders of this daily Dzogchen LA group. And they'll read from different Buddhist books and ch there's chants and prayers from Lama Surya Das's packet. But the thing is, they, he said, we're going to do this, excuse me, King Lion Meditation. And they explained what it was. They were going to, what the object was, <laughs> was to merge the self, the breath of the self, with the breath of the force, God, the ah, the dap. Oh, well. And see, I kind of sensed before when I meditate by myself, there happens on the in-breath, the in-breath's half of the circle, and then the out-breath, the rest of the half, there's a circle forms in front of me and it becomes a rhythm and I know the rhythm is the rhythm rhythm of God the Tao because the great ray comes in and goes out of my mind and it will first your arc of light's got to be released and then Jesus says you'll know the great ray and that's the light comes straight in the middle of your head down the middle of you and you ground yourself you put it in the ground it's an in and an out movement you don't know it's there but it's there I swear it's there and it radiates out the whole center of you. And that, that light is trying to open up all the chakras, all the light centers down your body. And I explain to people, because we think we're a body, that image Jesus teaches us is in our mind. So as your mind is illumined, the body's an image in the mind, your body gets illumined and you feel it as mm. in the body. And these chakras open, they line all up next to this great ray, and blah, blah, blah. It's miraculous. You, When Jesus says you're the light of the world, he means it. You are the light of the world. So anyway, I'd gotten to the point where I could, I was doing the in and out breath, but I hadn't really thought about joining it with the living force. But because, see, I'd heard that sound, I, in my mind, and it's in my email, when I meditate, there's a stillness to my mind, but I, I'll go, ah, 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 I'm calling to it. I'm inviting it in. And Jesus talks, says it, invite in, you know, so I'm invited. I know it's there. I want to hear it. It's there. I know you're there. I love you. I'll say, I love you. Well, and I know it's there. I've not since ever had that awe take over by itself again. And it doesn't need to because that once was enough. It proved to me there's a God bigger than us that created us. But anyway, so I'm going, ah, ah, ah. And then in my mind, though, this is part of meditation. And you can Google that, too, on different types of meditation. But without knowing what I'm doing, see, it's called focusing the mind. It's called concentrating on a point. In my mind, I'm listening for that sound. And I know what that sounds like. So I go to that sound. And before I know it, in front of me, this circle gets big. It goes in, out in front of me and it starts to circulate with the in and out movement of the, great, of, of the great ray. So there's just a big circle in front of me. And that's what happened the day before the experience of this non-experience. So I want to go to this thing right here. Oh, I, and before then, I was reading a poem called On Trust in the Heart. There's, anyway, we'll get back to some of this, what time we got. Um, 
oh, now I should talk about this. A significant event that occurred, this was a Wednesday before the Friday that this experience occurred. That, and I kind of talked about this last week because it occurred last Tuesday, really. One, one of my neighbors, their dog jumped on my dog sitter when I was gone one time and I had still had judgment on these people and I knew it. So with intention, I would practice advanced forgiveness on them. But on, on Tuesday, when, when I was walking by their house, I was really happy and going, knowing their spirit, seeing the light go through the dogs. They got two horses and the people. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit showed me the vision that I had been judging these people. And he shows me what I do when I, he gives me an example, a bit of an image. And it wasn't pretty. The image was, I was like a male dog that lifts its, leg, lifts its leg and urinates on people, animals, whatever situations that I'm in judgment of. And it made me stop and think about what's that damn mean? It means I'm putting the stench of urine on my brothers. I mean, it's a horrible visualization, but true. I, I, they're not holy. <laughs> I'm not holy when I'm doing it. So when that came up, I, it really sit in my mind. I went, I don't want to do this anymore. And in, in a meditation, I was, that still was with me. And it came to me what Mama Surya Das says, but I never got it before. He says, turn, turn the mind back on the seer. And in this case, the thrower. Turn the mind back on the sea or throw and thrower and see who's doing this. And I got what he meant is that who's doing this judging? I'm the holy son of God or holy Buddha, but I've allowed my will, my choice to, in a knee jerk moment, go with that ego judgment. So I can step back from that and turn and turn. And look at ego. And I told ego, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not judging anymore. I don't like this. I don't want to put the stench of urine on anybody. I am not kidding. I turned on the thrower. And see what they talk about meaning. The thrower, picture it like a, um, well, ego, an entity. It's throwing a thought. It's throwing a thought like a bone, a stick out there and knee jerk. I'm jumping on it. I'm running to go get that bone, that thought of judgment on my brother. And I'm picking that stick up. Sometimes I'm laying down, I'm chewing on it, having a big ass story of what the hell they did wrong and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's when you catch yourself. There's Joan. Hi, Joan. <laughs> you catch yourself how you're going along with the judgment. You're agreeing with it. That's why Jesus says your feelings and your mood tells you who you decided with and then you choose again. Well, so what I did, I'm not honestly, I did. I decided and I wrote it in a text to my companion. I'm taking that stick or bone and I'm throwing it back to ego. And I've told him, I don't want that bone. You take it, you keep it. I don't want it. And so it became a, I drew the line in the sand. Now, I've never done that before. I've never really done it before. Now, we can draw the line in the sand, but then we might fall off just a little. That's okay, because it's called stabilizing the view, where you come, you get the feeling, I, I got off, I got out of alignment, I went over there and judge, and we'll come back, practice forgiveness, come back. It's a constant pendulum swing, back and forth, Come back to the center, to the alignment of the holiness of the now moment, this moment, only moment, being in the presence of God and in the flow, the movement, this cradling movement. Now, what I want to get to is when that, when that, so this happened before, see, now this was an integral step because in my mind, I had to tell myself, I'm not doing that anymore because uh, Jesus says in the course somewhere, the, the cessation of judgment is not an easy thing, but can be done if you really realize who walked with you. You know, all enlightened beings, Jesus, Buddha, Holy Spirit, ascended masters, 
They're all here with us, giving us these holy thoughts. You can do it. You can do it. And giving you actual sentences, pith instructions, they're called. Like, and one I love is keep getting up. That means don't the hell stop. So you falter. No, don't let ego beat you up. Just come back to the path and go again. Get back up. Get back up on that horse. Keep on going. So anyway, that was an integral part of why I think this vision could occur or this experience, non-experience could occur. Okay, so I'm just going to read this because, uh, well, no, I can explain it. See, I was texting my companion because I've been sitting with this been sitting with what happened and it came about because of the king lion meditation where where the self the breathing of the in and out breathing of the self combines with the in and out movement of the great ray and what i realized happens is it is it, this motion which is the, called the flow being in the flow uh, is there is this living force this light force is like the ebb and flow of an ocean, the, an in and out movement. Everything is flowing in that in and out movement until I grab onto something and uh, grab, cling onto it or push it away. Then I've stopped. The flow for me, now the flow is still going. I'm just not aware of it. <laughs> and then, and then you got to practice forgiveness and take that deep breath in and the out breath and ask Holy Spirit to help me. And you're, get i'm now found if to mad, go back to the breath the breath is very settling and stabilizing now is that when it combines with this living force what happens a movement i could now realize i use the word cradling picture you're cradling cradling a baby here it's cradling you know the babies you know this movement back and forth it's really a very sweet movement back and forth. Well, see, it's the in and out movement. And the self could be over here on the side and the Holy Son, the Holy Father's over on the other side. And what Jesus says in the beginning, remember, there's a disappearance of the Son into the Father and the Father into the Son. What came to me was when this was going on, this movement was occurring and I realized it, it's a lulling, it's a lulling feeling. You get relaxed. So when you're relaxed, you let go. So you're letting go of thoughts of separation. You just let go. Ultimately, you let go of yourself, the feeling you're a body. You're just in that movement of this breath. And the breath gains a momentum. I thought about this because it happened three, four more times. This wasn't a single incident. Is it's it's a it's a relaxing cradling where you let go in this whole process. When I look back out on it, I could have speeded everything up if I just the hell relax. Because ego is a, the body's a symbol of the ego, and it's contracted. It's dense. It's rigid. It's contracted. That's why you shrug the shoulders and go. Ah, waller your mouth around. I waller my head around, waller my shoulders around. You're relaxing. You're taking some three deep breaths in and going, exhaling. Ah, it's a, you're, re, it's a big deal. I'm explaining relaxing is a big deal. And then part of the thing is you're letting, doing these lessons, you're letting go of the person you used to be. You know, your personality, your sex, your whatever, your job, your family. You still take care of your family. We're not extremists here where we're just totally doing spiritual work and forgetting our family and walking off from them or something. No, no, no. This is the middle way. This is practical. But relaxing. So this picture, this cradling, this, this cradling that's going on. It's so beautiful. It's loving. And it flows back and forth, back and forth. And what happens, it gains a momentum. And it came to me that it actually ricochets. <laughs> actually, the son of God, he is just lost. He just, all of a sudden, wham, it's lost into the infinite of God. And when that happened, see, I didn't know it happened. 
only way I know it happened, I came back. And when I came back, there was awareness of my breath. And I'm not kidding. I realized I went somewhere. <laughs> and I went, whoa. And that's when I Googled. It took me a day <laughs> later because I was still like, what? I'm just resting in the light at that point, just resting in, resting in this sweetness and love. But I Googled unconsciousness in Buddhism and found samadhi where it's the, the um, transcendence of all mental activity. Then I Googled what Jesus said. So you ricochet, the, there's, no long, so you're, there's no longer a subject and an object. Because see, I'm a body, I'm a breath, I'm a subject. And the object is the breath. Or the object's my sliding gorse when I look in front of me, or my family members, or my loved ones. There's duality, subject and object. Well, without subject and object, that I mean, when you got that, you got awareness. You got conversations. You got tuness. But when you're in this state of samadhi or disappearance into the Father, there is not a self and there's not a God. There's neither one. They are, they're in union of divinity. So that, that I understand there's different levels of samadhi. But the point is, that's the goal. And Jesus in the course says, when I did I read the whole thing, I kind of got lost here. Be, this is beyond experience we try to hasten. So he doesn't belabor this point. He just gives you one paragraph. So I'm just here to explain this is real. <laughs> and so now picture what the thing is. So now when I meditate, guess what ego wants? It wants to be in samadhi again, more. <laughs> I love it. I love it that I'm aware what ego's doing because I got the power now. I'm the king lion. And that's what you guys are. You are holy sons of God, holy Buddhas. I mean, you are God, really, Jesus says in the course, you are God. Because <laughs> there's only God, not that he's our creator, but and we don't run around out there in the mortal world saying stuff like this because they'll put you away in the psych ward. But in a Course of Miracles group, we can say this and we can practice this because it's true. But to get to that point, it takes practice and dedication. But now, um, so I forgot. oh, so... So there, that's why there's just one paragraph, because that's not the focus of your attention. Oh, so I know what I was going to do. So ego, when I meditate, is want me to have that non, I now call it a non-experience, because it, it, to have an experience, you got subject and object. <laughs> there's got to have be something experiencing it. There was no cell. There was no, nobody there. But Mama Suri says the light was on, but nobody was home. <laughs> I never got that before either. But that's true. The light's home, on, but nobody's home, meaning the subject, self, separate from God. But anyway, so ego is wanting me to have that experience. So I would see it, want me to get in, try, try to get into a breathing pattern of all this. Then I realized that's called attachment. It's just like when you have sex with your loved ones and you want to climax. Ego thinks you want to do that every time. And then he puts you through the ringer. When you don't, I mean, it's just like ex expectations. So I've gone from now, I, I, it dawned on me when I, when I texted my loved one, I went, I know where I'm at now. I'm wanting samadhi. No, it's, and I would go LOL because isn't that funny? Ego's now expecting it. And I go, no. Mm -mm. And it came to me. I don't care if I have samadhi again or not. Okay? Because I know God's there. The Tao's there. The living force is there. So I just, when I see that clear, golden, transparent light, that's all I care about. I see that light. It's here everywhere, streaming through everything, streaming through me. And I'm here to help my brothers in however I can help them and to have a fun time, you know, enjoy this, this life. But now that's not the object. The object is really to help my brothers. 
That's the object and enjoy life. So there is no expectation of how any of this is other than you want to wake up from the dream and become enlightened. And to do that, you got to do your daily work. That's all I'm wanting to say. <laughs> 751. Anyone got a, got a thought or uh, this is wild. Let me tell you, I know it's wild. Oh, I know. I want to, I want to read what I read when I experienced, when I Googled Samadhi, mm -mm. it says, see, I have a, uh, now that's the other thing that Course in Miracles students sometimes get freaked out. When I talk about, I've got a guru now. See, I go to Holy Spirit is, is there and I'll hear Holy Spirit, but that's in the mind. I, it, for my awakening up, I needed a physical person that I could communicate with, explain what was going on and would give me instructions. And this Lama Surya Das, you can have him whoever you want. But he's, he'll never talk about it, but he is an enlightened person beyond enlightenment. That man knows what the heck he's doing. And, and so he can pick up on where the person's at and give them the exact instruction that can help move them along the path. And I would not be where I am today without him and meditating every day with this, this Zochin group and doing this following chants and prayers they have that open the heart and cause you to have empathy and compassion for your brothers. Cause I didn't really have that. I really didn't have that. I didn't have an open heart. My chakra opened during all of this with them. But the thing is, it says here, um, part of it too is union with the divine, which, and it says, and I'm, this is a quote, integrate this undisturbed state they call of silence. See, they call it an undisturbed state of silence, along with the disturbed states of waking, dreaming, and sleeping. Because see, that's disturbed states, state, subject, and object. So all along the way in these talks that I've given since a year ago, February, you all have seen the process I've gone through. But I talk about as you have an experience or a, a reasoning or a pithy, epiphany, you integrate it into your daily life. And Jesus talks about that as well as that you uh, take that item, stabilize it, and then go again. Then go again back out and practice and get another epiphany. You're building on these um, truths that resonate with you and help change your, your and take you along the process of awakening. So I want to stabilize the view, this view I have of this living force within my daily life. And then it went on to say that, where's the page? That's page three, I want page four. It also says the root of liberation is the guru's grace. And see, I hadn't really got that because see that can also correspond with the grace of God, grace. Grace means you're already home, but you don't know it. Well, the grace of the guru He's home and he with transmissions, either mentally and then just that emit from him, the person can absorb them and take them on as their own. And you get in that feeling of grace, that feeling of, you know, comfort, just keep practicing. So what, I just want to acknowledge this without him, I would not be holy and without Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, Gary Renard books, this group. And my, my Dzogchen Sangha group that I meditate with, this is really a Sangha, a community, a support group, family, friends, where we support each other and help each other. Without all the, it's a family effort. This is all a family effort. So I thank you for being here. And it's 7.56. So anybody got a thought or a comment that you want to share or before I stop the recording? I know this is pretty wild, so I get it. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. Now, if anyone's listening and don't have the four-page advance for, Vic, for
forgiveness documents that I composed from the course and Gary Renard's books, just uh, message me, me on Facebook or email me and I will email you that four page forgiveness document because without that doc, without practicing advanced forgiveness and I did that from 2014 till March of 2019 that's five years you guys and I didn't know what I was doing it's called faking it while you make it that's this whole thing that the course is having you do these lessons you don't we don't understand them and jesus says understanding is not the purpose knowledge is not the person purpose it, it, in the introduction to the lessons he says just do them you don't have to understand them he says this just do them it's in the application that the experience will result and i'm here to swear by that so it's called fake it while you make it because when I would practice events, forgiveness, saying you are spirit, whole, pure, and innocent, always forgiven and released on my brothers, I didn't believe they were holy. I didn't know what release meant, from release them from the body, that they were pure and innocent. Oh, no. Because we're dealing with thousands of lifetimes of being a body and the knee-jerk uh, judgment of duality, subject and object. So you just, I just said these things. I'm not kidding for five years and I didn't know what I was doing and but it worked because as you do forgiveness Holy Spirit heals unconscious thoughts and judgments and guilt that you can't get to and 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 it's not a one for one ratio he does maybe a thousand or ten thousand to one time that you actually practice forgiveness on somebody it's huge if during the day you remember just one time to do it but that's why you put sticky notes around. And I did. I did. I still have some around because the mind's got to be reminded to do this. Um, so uh, but what's so great about I can share these things that I did that helped me get to where I am could save you years of work. Sally's got to go. Bye, Sal. Bye, Sal. So. Uh, and Gonzalo, you got to go or he's saying by the side, I'm going to stop the recording. But anybody wants my four page forgiveness document, plus there's a document I did where I pulled all the great ray and spark of light and arc of light words out of the course. And then I did a document out of Gary's one of Gary's books, Lovers Forgotten No One, where he taught art and person give a list of things we can do to relax the ego as we practice advanced forgiveness. I will. Uh, email that to you. So thank you everybody for coming out tonight. I'm gonna to stop the recording.